What's going on guys, this is Sean from Southwestern Studios. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five quick reasons why you should be shooting the Sony RX10 Mark III and Mark IV in 2023. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view. I feel good, you look great. I like you, I can't wait. A first time, a first day. You're so fine, I'm so late. I do want to take a second to touch on why I included the Mark III as well as the Mark IV, and that really comes down to pricing. Because the Mark IV is still pretty expensive at around $1,700, $1,800 in the, uh, the new market at a place like Best Buy but you can get a Mark III for significantly cheaper, sometimes five, six, seven hundred dollars. And that camera does most and has most of what the, uh, the Mark IV has too as well. So if you have the dough, you get the Mark IV. If it's, uh, you know, you need a little bit cheaper, don't have the dough, then you just go ahead and get the Mark III. But let's go ahead and get started with number one. And you can see this camera right here is the RX10 Mark III, but it has the exact same functionality and form factor as the RX10 Mark IV. Now, number one is the fact that you can basically have an all-in-one camera in the palm of your hand. It does a lot of things. Um, it gives you about, I would say about 85 to maybe even 90% of what you're needing in a camera without having to spend the big bucks for you know the super wide angle lens or the super telephoto zoom lens. You're gonna get a lot of that functionality though but you know, at a fraction of the price. All right, now we're gonna be moving to number two, and that is going to be this nice Zeiss lens right here. So you can see right there. Now this lens, even though it's a fixed lens, it's extremely sharp, and it is basically you know, made for this one inch sensor inside the RX10 Mark III and IV. Now what that means though, is that for that sensor, you're gonna be squeezing out as much as you possibly can out of that with this nice lens. This is not a bridge camera that has kind of like a cheap old lens on a decent sensor. This is an extremely good sensor with an extremely good lens. And you know, that's saying something. You can get some really nice stuff out of that. All right, now on to number three. And number three is going to be the lens again, but now what we're talking about is its focal length. So if you can see right here, you go ahead and zoom from 24 all the way to 600. There we go. Okay, so what that means is that you're going to be going from a 24 focal length from landscape and you're gonna be going all the way in to about 600. So that includes things from like portraiture to wildlife, to sports, to street photography, basically anything else in between. It's 24 to 600 is very powerful. A quick example, you can go out into the street and frame up pretty much whatever you want without anybody really noticing what you're doing because the camera itself, you know, is kind of small. And that leads me to number four. And number four is going to be actually one of this camera's, in my opinion, most powerful traits. And that is the fact that you can get this camera into places that you will not be able to bring in a nice 200 to 600 telephoto lens. It's just not possible. So for example, I was able to go into Bush Stadium and get these nice photos of I believe is Adam Wainwright, and also a nice wide angle landscape shot of Bush Stadium from the nosebleeds. Now, keep in mind, this was taken all from the same place, all by this camera right here. So this leads me to number five. And number five is the most pertinent reason why it relates to 2023, is the fact that previously, you know, these cameras, it has a really good one inch sensor, but sometimes in low light, in certain situations, the image kind of, not falls apart, but maybe gets a little bit noisy. Okay, that's just one of the inherent things that a smaller sensor is going to bring. But now with the advent of that AID noise, the game has changed significantly. So previously, when you would have this camera and you would take a shot and you would say, well, hmm, this image is really good. It's almost usable, but there was just too much noise for me to really save it. Now that's no longer a problem. You take all the photos you want from this camera, even if the, you know, the grain is a little bit high, the ISO is a little bit high, whatever, and you just kind of throw it into Lightroom, into that AID noise, and now all of a sudden, the picture goes from this 
to this, bam, just like that. And what would previously have been a fault of the camera now almost no longer applies because of AID noise. This reason alone and the fact that you can take it with you wherever you can't take anything else are the main reasons why I do recommend that you shoot this camera in 2023 because you'll be getting very, very good results now, especially with that AID noise. That's a complete game changer. It's not for this camera, it's for all other cameras as well. But in this camera's case, it really makes up for one of its major flaws that people have had. Now that flaw is really no longer there because you're gonna be able to save a lot of photos and make them usable. So there we go, guys, there we have it. That was the five reasons why you should be shooting the Sony RX10 Mark III and IV in 2023. Hope to see you guys again in the next video and I will catch you guys later.